Well, welcome back to Redeemed by Grace Fellowship. I enjoy you had a great Thanksgiving. I know I did. Too much apple pie, though, and too much turkey, but that's what it's for, right? To give thanks to God for everything he has done for us. Well, you know, we're going to continue our study today as we continue our journey and walk through the book of Acts. And we're almost done. We're almost complete with that. We uh, did the beginning of chapter uh, 27 last week. And this week we will uh, look at the rest of that chapter um, uh, and then heading into 38 as well. And so uh, that will just leave a very short section to do uh, the next week. And after that, We'll be looking for a new study. So if you have an idea for a new study for us to do after this one, right there it is, scrolling by right now, uh, is our email address. Shoot us an email at rbgf22 at yahoo.com and let us know what you think. What would you like to see in our next study? We love to hear about that as we make preparations for that. You can also join us for an ongoing uh, study that's going on right now. Uh, a Christmas of Old, it is called. You will find it also here on YouTube. And uh, that is taking us uh, looking at Christmas through the Old Testament uh, and heading into Christmas, which we might switch back on Christmas Day to the uh, New Testament, but uh, as, as should be expected, as it's fulfilled now, uh, those prophecies of old. So, but we're taking a look at that and kind of seeing how it all fits together. So, I hope you'll join us for that study as well. And uh, you can still reach and go through some of our older studies that are also out there, including the Fundamentals of the Faith uh, by John MacArthur. So, you can find that out there as well. But uh, uh, we are, again, going to do a quick review uh, this morning of where we left off last week. And then we will head into today's lesson. And uh, boy, let's try not to get too wet. Oh, did, is that a spoiler alert? Hmm. We'll see what it does. Let's pray together before we get started. Almighty God, we're so thankful that we can come together to open up your word, uh, to fellowship with one another and with you, most importantly. And we pray, Lord, as we uh, continue through this uh, book of Acts, that we not only hear the stories and what happened, why it happened, but we, that we see, most importantly, your hand at work what it is that you are accomplishing uh, through these things that are going on and how the, the wills of men and your will struggle together, but yours is sovereign. And because of your grace, it's always victorious. And we just thank you and praise you for that. So Lord, as we uh, continue in our study, we ask you to bless our time together. We ask Lord that you would open our eyes and hearts and ears to hear and to understand and to apply these truths to our lives to bring glory and honor to your name. And it's in the precious name of Jesus Christ that we do pray. Amen and amen and amen. Well, I'm going to go ahead and bring this to the screen. Uh, I'll go full screen a little bit later, but right now I'm just going to go like this. And kind of, kind of uh, remind you what we've been. Uh, as you know, we, uh, Paul has been uh, dealing with the uh, council there and the accusations that they're bringing against him and the threats to kill him and uh, gone through several men of power. And finally, uh, he is heading to Rome. And as if you remember, he appealed to Rome. He appealed to Caesar. And why did he do that? Uh, well, he did that because God told him that he must go to Rome and he must proclaim the truth of Christ uh, there as well as what he has been doing throughout Asia and throughout uh, 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 Israel as well. And so he, he is doing that. And now he has forced the hands of the uh, powers that be to actually put him on a ship and send him to Rome as God has promised is going to happen. So the works of men are basically looking at, huh, we've got to cover our backside and send him out of here 
or else we're going to be in trouble with Rome. And if we turn them over, because if we turn them over to these guys, they're going to kill him. On the same time, we need to send him to, to Rome uh, to appease these guys so that something's being done about him and he's not just uh, hanging around. And so, or being set free. And, and so this whole process is happening. And as they set sail, they, they leave a port near Caesarea uh, and, and actually go up to the city and, and get another ship and head on out. They begin to take sail, and their uh, plan is like it would always be with a sailor, especially at this time of year. Remember, this is approaching winter. And in the winter months, the, the Mediterranean Sea is not a good place to be sailing. It's very violent. It, 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 the storms come up and they create massive waves. It, that's even true today. But today, I think our ships are a little more equipped to handle them than the smaller vessels of this day. And so the, the, the whole idea was that they would go across the, the southern shore of Asia or Turkey. Uh, again, some of those places were Paul had been on his first, second, and third missionary journeys uh, and planting churches and doing those things. So they kind of yeah, they go up, they go north of Cyprus, uh, very close there in that little port uh, north of Cyprus where uh, you know, Paul's hometown is in Tarsus, and they continue and they, uh, uh, heading westward. And then uh, the plan is usually to, uh, to continue, uh, if I'm going to continue heading west, to cut across the Aegean at a very uh, different point, and that is that is protected, the island of Crete's kind of in the middle there, and it kind of protects the uh, uh, the rest of the water from uh, these violent waves that are caused in the sea. So the idea is to go north of Crete uh, and head on uh, probably into the area of Greece before then uh, crossing over the Adriatic into uh, the Italian peninsula. And what happens is uh, God says, no, I've got a better plan. <laughs> uh, and the winds blow and it moves the ship to the south side of Crete, a very dangerous place to be. And they actually come into port uh, in Fort or, or Fair Haven, and as they're there, uh, there uh, is evidence that a church was planted there. Do not know. We do not have textual evidence in Acts that Paul actually uh, spent time preaching and discipling there. Uh, it, we don't know that he was really there all that long, uh, but it could have been that believers that came about uh, uh, through. Uh, whatever Paul did while they were there, um, uh, did indeed uh, come to find a church. And we do know that later on, uh, many years, the uh, the uh, as Paul appoints Titus to minister to the island of Crete, that he goes to many different churches around the island, uh, strengthening them up, building, putting elders in place in each of those churches, and uh, really becomes a support that uh, uh, covers the island. And so uh, that's uh, important to know because that church there is there uh, when Titus is there. So they then in, in, in uh, uh, Fairhaven, and they're there, and uh, uh, God comes and, and speaks to him and says, hey, you know, um, uh, it's going to get bad. And, you know, um, well, it's not going to be pretty. There is going to, you are going to be marooned and shipwrecked. Um, and uh, that's going to take place. But these men, if they stay on the ship, will be sp uh, spared uh, their lives. Uh, the ship's going to be lost, but you will be uh, shipwrecked, and uh, at that point, then uh, we will be begin to prepare uh, you for heading to Rome. And so it's all part of his purpose in doing that. In fact, if we look at the map of Crete, uh, well, we, we see uh, there in Fairhavens uh, where they're at, 
the centurion has an idea. Again, this is winter. Paul's content to stay there till the winter's over. But uh, this guy wants to get everybody back on the ship. And remember, Paul's a prisoner, so he doesn't have much of a choice. And he wants to head over to Phoenix. You see that over to the west just a little bit on the other end of the island. And there's where he wants to park for the winter before trying to cro cross uh, over uh, to Italy and to Greece and then to Italy. Italy. And so he, he wants to get there because that's uh, a decent place to port for the winter. Uh, and uh, Paul Wards says, no, we, you don't want to do that. Um, but, uh, you know, the argument is a nail, and they uh, get on the ship, and they begin to head that direction. But the winds on the south side of Crete and the storms push them out to sea, and they go sailing even south of the Ida Cadia that you see there, where they should normally go, if they're going to Phoenix, be up close to the coastline of Crete, uh, and nowhere near the island even, but they actually miss the island heading south and go right out into open seas. And that's not a good place for them to be. Um, again, Paul had warned them, uh, nope, this is not what you want to do. Uh, you don't want to set out in the wintertime, but he wants to move on and get to Phoenix. And so he orders them uh, to push off because he wants to stop in, in, in Phoenix for the winter. And then he's pushed out to sea. Uh, and that, again, uh, is not where any man wants to be, but is according to God's plan. And God is sovereign that his plan and his promise will make do, for it brings forth his glory. Uh, and we begin to see his salvation that is provided uh, through trusting in him. And we see that in Paul. We don't necessarily see it out of the crew, even though Paul will begin to talk to the crew about this is what's about to happen uh, type of thing. Uh, but they do, uh, the, as they head into those rough seas, uh, they do what every good sailor knows to do, and they began to do those things, everything humanly possible, to save the ship by uh, dropping an anchor to slow down the ship, uh, that's being cost. Uh, anchor's not uh, long enough to reach the bottom, but it's it can drag and slow them down a little bit and give them uh, an easier path to steer uh, the ship uh, and move it in the direction that they need to go and fight fight against the currents and the waves and all that kind of stuff, the winds, uh, and do that. But uh, uh, they do also begin to, uh, let's lighten the ship, let's get rid of the cargo, start ch chucking cargo and food. <laughs> That's kind of stupid, right? You need food. You start chucking anything you can over uh, to lighten the ship um, uh, so that uh, uh, you might be able to fight this storm. Uh, uh, again, you're fighting against God. That's what they're fighting against when we're looking at that. So uh, those are important things that... Uh, uh, is going on here, but uh, you know they begin at one point it gets so bad they begin to fear if you remember, and they begin to abandon ship if you will. They 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 have boats like both uh, is what we probably call it, but a smaller vessel that they they began to lower by ropes to the water. They're going to put the men in it and get them out of here because this ship is going to surely run aground. It's uh, surely going to run aground. And, and in my mind, I'm sitting there, well, why get in the small boat? Because yeah, it's even worse if you ask me. <laughs> I take my chances on the bigger ship, you know. But <laughs> uh, anyway, the, uh, there they are. They, uh, so they, they are, are ready to abandon ship. But Paul then goes to the centurion and says, look, God has told me that the, everybody who remains on the ship will be saved. Those guys, if they go in that boat, they will perish. They will be lost. And so the centurion orders them back, and, and they cut the ropes and let those boats go, and they remain on the ship uh, as that. And then... Uh, 
then Paul goes to him and tries to encourage him and, and again tells the group, this is what God has promised. We are going to run aground, but everybody will be spared who stays on the ship. So men, take what food you have left and eat. Build up your strength. You're going to need it uh, for that time. So he encourages um, uh, a little bit uh, to eat and to trust uh, God and that uh, uh, all will be well. Well, that's easier said than done, as we even know in our own lives uh, uh, that uh, don't, even as believers, there's times that we just don't. We fear because of fear, Satan gets a hold of us and we stop trusting that God's got it. Uh, and that's a lesson kind of in itself here, that, that when God says he's going to do something, he's going to do it uh, in his timing. So we just have to... Uh, uh, be aware of those things. So, as we uh, uh, then begin the last portion here of chapter 27 and then the beginning of chapter 28, uh, again, today's lesson reading won't be that long, um, but I did want to separate 28 a little bit, dealing with the shipwreck uh, uh, story, if you will, because the one that comes after that is him arriving at Rome. So there's kind of a void of time there. So it's kind of a natural break. So I thought we would do it this way uh, so that we have that. So let's go ahead. I am going to slide off the side here. I guess it's that way on the screen. Uh, but I'm going to slide myself off and go full screen so that you can see the scripture better. Uh, you will still hear my voice. And uh, I should be able to leave the banner below, and uh, before I get to that, I might as well tell you what that banner is all about, uh, and uh, it's basically asking you, please uh, follow, subscribe, like uh, all of Redeemed by Grace's uh, platforms. You will find us here on YouTube right now. You just go down there, hit the subscribe button, hit that notification bell so that you never miss anything that we post. Hit that like button for the YouTube algorithm and all those things uh, that you do. But also you will find us on Facebook, Instagram. You'll find us on Twitter. You'll find us on TikTok. You'll find us on LinkedIn and Truth Social. You'll also find the same videos that we put on YouTube. Uh, you will also find over on Rumble. So if censorship ever comes into play where something's taken down, you can go over to Rumble and you will find that same video uh, if it happens uh, to be missing. So anytime, that, so just go to all of them and subscribe to them all because there are different content that's placed on each one of them. Uh, and uh, that variety of different things is changing each day as we uh, look into new platforms and other things that we do and as those continue to grow uh, on those things. So make sure that you do that, but make sure, importantly, that you do subscribe to this YouTube channel and to like this video and to share it out amongst your friends that more might hear the truth of Jesus Christ. So that is what we're about. That's what we want to be doing. So let's uh, get rid of me. And I know I hear the applause, but uh, we'll do that. We'll go full screen here. And so we're going to start reading in a, a chapter or it, we're still in chapter 27. And we're going to be looking at verse 39. <clears throat> Now, when it was day, they did not recognize the land, but they noticed a bay with a beach. Good sight to see in the morning, right? On which they planned, if possible, to run the ship ashore. So they cast off the anchors and left them in the sea. And at the same time, loosening the ropes, they tied the rudders. And then hoisting the foresail uh, to the wind, they made for the beach. All right, so they see the beach. Uh, there it is. It's Malta, the island of Malta, and they are going to uh, head directly for it. So they're doing everything to keep it from changing. Let's make sure these rudders don't change direction. We're going to point it right up there. We're going to uh, uh, drop these 
anchors again the, uh, and uh, get rid of it because we don't need them. And we're going to open up the sail again. Yeah, obviously, when the wind's blowing, you put the sail down. Well, they're going to put them back up and aim them directly so that that wind blows them directly towards that beach that they see. The plans to run aground. Okay, and then when we get to verse 41, let me change the page here. Here we go. But striking a reef, oh, we can't see that. It's underwater, right? So, but striking a reef, they ran the vessel aground. The bow struck and remained immovable, and the stern was uh, being broken up by the surf. The soldiers planned to kill the prisoners, least any should swim away and escape. But the centurion, wishing to save Paul, kept him uh, from carrying out their plan. Important thing of God moving in the heart. This centurion, there's uh, people that believe that he actually became a believer, and uh, others say he did not. Uh, but we don't really know because it didn't spell it out for us here in the book of Acts. Uh, but we do know this centurion is going to make good on his delivery to Rome. And in doing that, there's an underground church in Rome where we know that many centurions uh, did become a part of the underground church in Rome. And so that is it. Is he one of them? Possibly, but we do not know for sure, but it is having an influence on him that where he has been talking about the things that God has promised and he's seeing those things fulfilled before his eyes and we see his heart being changed. And so the natural tendency would be, hey, if you know, it was just like prison guards we talked about earlier, and that if uh, your prisoner got away, <laughs> your life, your head's coming off uh, because you didn't do your job. And so that's why these guys are saying, hey, we need to kill all these prisoners, chuck them over. Uh, that way, none of them get away. And no one can get away. And then we're in trouble for somebody got away. We can just say, well, yeah, the, the shipwreck. Yeah, it's it, that's what happened to them. They all perished type of thing. And so uh, that's kind of uh, where we're at. So the soldiers in verse uh, 42 uh, plan to kill the prisoners, least. Any should swim away and escape. But the centurion, wishing to save Paul, kept them from carrying out the, the on their plan. He ordered those who, who could swim to jump overboard first and make uh, for the land. And the rest uh, were on planks or on some pieces of the ship floating, if you will. And so, it, it you know, it's like a life reserve, right? piece of floating foot, uh, uh, wood, grab a hold of it, kind of brings back memories of the movie Titanic, if you've ever seen that. And, and the rest of the planes uh, are, are on uh, the pieces of ship. And, and so it was that all were brought safely to land, all prisoners and uh, the men of the ship were brought to the uh, land. So Again, here is Malta. You can see the area of Paul's shipwreck on Malta uh, as they come ashore and uh, uh, about where they are. Now, Malta is inhabited, so this isn't Gilligan's Island by any means, but uh, it is a place that, hey, we're not going anywhere. We've been shipwrecked here. Uh, we're hanging out here and until it's safe to to uh, move on. Well, in fact, we got to get another way out. We need a, a you know, how are you going to get off this island, right? Uh, type of thing if you, you just wrecked your ship. So, uh, but that's kind of, that is the area or kind of a close up of this island. Uh, you see the island goes all above it, but uh, uh, St. Paul's Bay is the area that they believe that the shipwreck occurred on. Uh, and uh, uh, as well. So let's uh, start chapter 28 and verse 1. And after they were brought safely through, 
we then learn that the island was called Malta, and the native people showed us unusual kindness, for they kindled a fire and welcomed us all. And because it had begun to rain and was cold, and when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and put them on the fire, here we go, poor Paul. Remember, we go back, uh, and uh, at his conversion, it was told to Ananias that he must suffer much for the, the sake of the Gentiles. Man, this guy has suffered a lot. All the beatings, he's been left for dead, he's, he, he's been sent in jail, he's been beaten time and time again, even by his own, uh, and... Uh, uh, here he is now, uh, shipwrecked. And is there what else can happen to the poor guy, right? Well, so he's he's at a fire, and these guys build a fire. They're cold, they're wet. It's winter time, remember? And they sit down to warm and dry uh, their clothes. And he puts a bundle of sticks, and he puts them on the fire. And a viper came out because of the heat and fastened to his hand. That's a venomous snake, guys. And so he's now been bitten by a snake. And when the native people saw the creature hanging from his hand, uh, they said to one another, no doubt this man is a murderer. Uh, he's got to be because uh, only bad things happen to bad people, that kind of thing. Uh, karma, as some people like to use that word, it's really a... Uh, a word that is not a valid word at all. Um, and so uh, uh, and so here we go. Uh, they, they're thinking the worst of him. Though he's escaped from the sea, justice has not allowed him to live. Uh, he's just been bitten by a viper. He's going to die. He's going to at least be sick, right? Uh, that is the idea. And uh, so we can see the fire here in this artist's rendition of it. The, you can see the sea and, and the, the turbulence. You can see the ship being crashed against the reef out there. Some guys are still coming up on shore, coughing up water as they do. And, and here these natives have built a, a fire and warmed them uh, for them to warm. And oh, poor Paul. He's got a snake hanging off his hand, and it's dangling there, and they're all looking at it like, uh, okay, uh, and watching uh, that. So what happens? Well, in verse uh, uh, 5, he, however, shook off the creature into the fire and suffered no harm. They were waiting for him to swell up or suddenly fall down dead, but when they had waited a long time and saw no misfortune come of him, they changed their minds and said that he was a god. Oh, they went the other way. Okay, if he, uh, if he, if he's not a bad guy and going to die for, and this is justice with him getting bit by a snake, then he must be a god, right? Remember, it's not the first time he's been called that, and we know uh, that on his first missionary journey, we saw that uh, him and Barnabas were, uh, because of a healing, were uh, thought to be gods. And they were trying to build an altar and, and offer sacrifice to it. <laughs> and, and Paul and Barnabas are going, time out, time out. No, 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 we're just men. We're, it's, uh, let me tell you about the God. And then they were able to, to go into a sermon from that point. Uh, but they have to really stop them because... Uh, uh, they were really getting ready to do that type of thing. So, uh, uh, we're going to leave off five. Verse 7. We're on verse 7 now. Now, in the neighborhood of that place, there were island, or lands belonging to the chief man of the island named uh, Publius, who received us and entertained hospitality for three days. So they get invited into the chief man of the island. Publius is his name. And there we go. And it's what happened 
that the father, Uncle Vilius, lay sick with the fever uh, in dentistry. And, and Paul visited him and prayed and putting his hands on him, healed him. And when this had taken place, the rest of the people of the island who had diseases came and were cured. And they also honored us greatly. And when we were about to sail, they put on board whatever we needed. And so here, here it is. I mean, they just... <laughs> They're already thinking he's a god because he didn't die from a snake. And now he performs, in the name of Jesus Christ, a, a miracle, healing um, uh, uh, a, a, a healing this gentleman, this person uh, that had been sick for days. And then the many, the masses come. Hey, <laughs> there's this guy here. I don't know if he's God or not, but hey, he's healing people. Uh, let's go. And so they begin to go, and they are also cured as well. And that does, and again, this text does not lay out here uh, a sermon like we've seen Paul delivered to the people, but there are uh uh, there is a church on Malta that uh, becomes uh, well known uh, th historically, and, and so uh, uh, we don't know that it started from this situation, but it sure uh, gave testimony to it. A uh, uh, future church, either way, but Paul himself is not mentioned, and people and again when you're studying scripture, we ask those who, what, when, where, and why questions. And one of the why questions here uh, uh, it, for that topic would be why is it not mentioned here? On well, the fact, if we watch what Paul had done in all his previous churches, there was a pattern that he would go into the Jews and he would preach the gospel. When they rejected, he would go to the Gentiles and uh, with the Jews that did believe, uh, says some always believed and most did not. And then they would begin to uh, preach to the Gentiles, and a church would be born. And what we saw happen is Paul would stay and disciple these people for a period of time. And then uh, elders would be uh, appointed and left, uh, and he would have correspondence with those uh, as he left. And some of those letters that we know uh, from certain individuals that he, he has sent, uh, uh, we know to have uh, become divine in the nature uh, uh, in the wording and those uh, because of the word of God and therefore it became important that they became part of the scripture because they testified to the truth of Jesus Christ or other letters might have been like you and I writing a letter to somebody in our family or whatever it might be encouraging them type of thing uh, but it wasn't something that laid out uh, the gospel and so therefore it would not have made the canon uh, the, the, which would be the Bible. So uh, uh, that is important for us to remember. So uh, they uh, did honor them greatly because of, uh, 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 of what is they have done. And so when they get ready to set sail here in the spring, when the weather had gone by uh, and it was time to get out, they were able to provide them with their what they needed. Uh, and they put on board whatever they needed. So you could imagine that they were well stocked with plenty of provisions as well as a ship uh, to actually to get off the island and head on to Rome. Why? Because God said he had to go to Rome. So he is going to go to Rome uh, as we do that. This is where we're leaving off on our study today. Um, and uh, I'll talk about what we're doing. But if you look at this map, you can see the island of Crete and how they kind of waddled from there across <laughs> fighting the currents and then shipwrecked on little Malta, uh, just south of Sicily uh, there. And uh, the boot, if you will, of the main peninsula of Italy. Uh, and you're going to see kind of uh, as they leave Malta, they're going to leave the North Shore. They're going to go into that canal or that short waterway. It's not a canal, actually, because it's not man-made. But uh, the little uh, uh, 
separation there between the toe of the boot, if you will, and the island of Sicily and head uh, up the shoreline uh, to the main port that leads to Rome. And so they're going to head that way. Interesting, they're going to pass uh, Mount Vesuvius that is a uh, uh, historically known, especially from the days of old, uh, in the stories when that volcano went up. And so there's a lot of volcanic activity in that region. Even today, um, there are, uh, uh, well, I can't remember the name of it right now, but there's one that's active right now that just blew its top uh, uh, recently in the last few years, when I say recently. Uh, so anyway, it's, uh, they're going to kind of go up that shoreline and they're going to uh, make port and head in uh, to Rome. Uh, doesn't sit on the, the water, but Rome is inland uh, from that, but uh, just a bit. But uh, uh, all the roads lead to Rome, as they say, <laughs> and that's true from the port. So uh, next week, as we look at that, we're going to finish up uh, the book of Acts. So we're going to be looking at verses of chapter 28, verses 11 through 31 to the end of the chapter. And uh, at that time, we are going to go see him in Rome. And I showed you the map beforehand because a lot of that, whatever happened in between leaving Malta and uh, getting to Rome, we don't really know. It's not recorded. Dr. Luke did not record that information. So we do not know uh anything about it uh, uh at that particular point but my guess it would be uh uh not a uh, a uh, spiritual type uh journey from that particular point from uh that so uh when we get to rome uh we're going to see uh the end of this chapter and uh, and we'll enjoy the rest of the story at that time so uh we'll as we get there we'll see him encounter uh the romans as they get to the port there so that is our lesson today let me go back to the, here well i'm back <laughs> So I hope you've enjoyed this so far. And again, uh, make sure that you do subscribe to the channel. Make sure that you do hit that like button and, and share these videos out. Uh, I've heard someone say sharing is caring and things like that. And uh, they're using it in the context of sports or whatnot. And, uh, not that it's a bad thing because I enjoy them as well. But the, 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 the idea uh, when we're talking about caring and we're able to share the gospel, Sharing is sharing. So make sure that we do that uh, so that uh, more of uh, your friends uh, can join us and continue to open up the Word of God together uh, and to learn and grow from what it is that God would have us to know. Again, please follow us on all platforms. As you see scrolling down there, again, you'll find us on everything, everywhere, basically. You'll find us on, on Facebook, Instagram. You'll find us on Twitter. You'll find us on TikTok and True Social and LinkedIn. And you'll find us all our videos also all duplicated over on Rumble uh, so that you can catch that. So make sure that you go to all those so you never miss anything uh, as well. Our email address, and you'll see that coming by right now, uh, is rbgf22 at yahoo.com. If you have any prayer requests, we'd love to hear about it. We'd love to pray for you, so please uh, go ahead and uh, email us those. If you have a praise of something God's doing in your life that we should be praising God for, man, we definitely want to hear about that. Again, rbgf22 at yahoo.com. Fired over for us. Uh, fired over. So if you have questions or comments that you need to make or, or want clarification on or whatever it might be, uh, again, rbgf22 at yahoo.com, fire it over, and we will definitely have a conversation. We uh, turn off the comment section here so that the, the trolls don't come in and attack people uh, for their questions 
uh, and we do that in a private manner. If you also have any kind of needs in your life that you need minister to, I don't know, maybe if you're dealing with substance abuse, if you're dealing with any of those things, shoot that over. And man, we can definitely get you hooked up with help uh, and uh, help you uh, spiritually as well uh, through those types of things. And as we've said all along, a redeemed by grace fellowship is not meant to be a replacement or a substitute for the local church. It is meant to be a fellowship to grow and learn and spend time. It's kind of like a small group. We love each other and help each other and encourage each other in our walk in Christ. But as we've learned in this study through the book of Acts, God created the local church for a specific reason. And that is that we can use the spiritual gifts that he's given us to further the kingdom. And so it's so important that we, each one of us are part of a local church for that specific reason. We don't go to a local church because they're going to give us stuff like music or children's programs or youth programs. We get those, but we go to serve. That is what we're to do. And so as we go to that local church, it's important for us to be to build up the saints within that local church. And so if you are not part of a local church, I challenge you to do so. And again, if you want to know well, what I look for in a local church, RBGF22 at yahoo.com. Send me an email. Let me know. And I'll be glad to provide you with biblical information about what it is that you should be looking for in a local church. On top of that, I might be able to give you a couple of uh, a list of some churches in your local area that you might want to take that criteria and go check out yourself and see if they match. And then it is and, and, and through prayer with God, to figure out is this where God wants me to serve. Important thing, my friends. Any questions, any time, hit us up on that email. And again, like I mentioned earlier, approaching the end, what would you like to do next? What study would you like to do next? Send over your ideas on rbgf22 at yahoo.com. We'll take a look at it. We're going to try and figure something out as we get into next year. In the meantime, head up uh, our uh, uh, Christmas season study that will continue uh, through uh, to the end of the year, in which we will take a look at uh, a Christmas of old. We'll be looking at Jesus through the Old Testament, the coming of Jesus through the Old Testament. So make sure that you do go check that out as well. Friends, I love you, and I thank you for tuning in. Let's pray, and then we will get out of here for this week. Almighty God, again, we thank you for your word. We thank you so much for the things you have given us. We, we pray, Lord, that you would just drive them deep into our hearts, that you would ignite our lives and breathe life into us, that we might live for you. And, Lord, we just pray uh, for the fellowship that you would continue to grow it over uh, the year. We thank you for the growth, the tremendous growth we have seen since April when we started. And we just thank you uh, for where we are. We look to you, Lord, for where it is that you would have us to go next, that we might be able to continue to, to uh, learn from you. We thank you. We praise you. We love you. And we lift this prayer. And the only name that we can, and that is the precious and holy name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Friends, again, we love you, and we will see you next week. Email us.